Hi there, this is Kevin from RogueDeckBuilder.com, here with match number one with uh, Boros Landfall, I guess is what we'll call it. This is a pretty good hand. We have two aired maces. We can lead off with the step links, and turn two, we can equip the step links with the adventuring gear, and hopefully swing in for a lot uh, after cracking the aired mesa. Actually, we can't do that in... Oh yeah, yeah. That doesn't quite work as expected. So maybe we will hold off a turn. I'm not sure exactly how we'll play this out, but we are on the draw. And this is definitely not a mulligan hand, so no, we would not mul mulligan. So I'd really like to see how this matches up versus Jun. So that's what I'm hoping to face is Jund here, as it is still the most popular deck, but also this enchantment deck that's going around. It seems like it'd be good to start playtesting at that against that. Other than I think that Soul Sisters is a very good matchup against the enchantment deck, as my creatures can get easily as big as their creatures can in just a few turns. And especially with the life gain from Soul Sisters, you can probably keep ahead of them. So it looks like we're, we're going to be facing Splinter Twin or Storm, and it looks like Storm. Post sideboard, we have a decent matchup with the Core Firewalkers. They're paying the butt for Storm as they completely negate the Grape Shot. Other than he can eventually win with the Goblins, the Empty the Warrens, as his alternative win condition. But we're going we're gonna to try to put some pressure on him here. Uh, yeah, that's the best best we could have. Either this or a regular land that comes into play un untapped would have been the best uh, draw we could have got, so that's good. So we'll go ahead and throw the step links out. Call it good. And next turn we're going to be able to get in for quite a bit, I believe. Because we can throw out the adventuring gear. I don't know if it's better just to throw out the plated geopede though. And hold and just get in there for four from the step links. But then it gives Storm a lot of times goes off pretty consistently on turn three or turn four. So I'm hoping for not a turn three where Storm goes off. He's already dinged himself down to 17. If he's the light, not the lightning bolt version, he's going to take some major damage here. So I think the right move is to go ahead and chuck out. Let's see, if I put the adventure in gear, equip it, then I can do six damage. But if I put the plated geopede out, next turn I can do a lot of lot more damage. So I think I'm going to. I do actually want another red source and white source. Other than that, does put me in the ability for him to grape shot for a lot less. So maybe I will just grab a planes here to save the life and throw out this plated geopede. Get in there for four. Put him down to 13. So more f fetch lands definitely hurt him. The Sheevan Reef might hurt him if he has to spend it. He, he will have to spend a colored mana for usually whatever spell he's playing. So we could be in good position here. He's going to probe me. Now he's down to 11. Uh, uh, is that lethal next turn if uh, he doesn't go off this turn? Let's see. So I'm getting four, plus four plus four to all my guys and adventure gear. That is lethal next turn just from the lightning helix and the plated GP and step links. So you can see how quickly this, this uh, Boros landfall deck can kill your opponent with them uh, shocking themselves, probing themselves, thought seizing themselves, and all this. All this uh, I guess that's why Red Deck Wins is getting very popular again is because of like this opponent here, he's already done quite a bit of damage to himself. I've done four, so he he's done he's done five damage to himself, and I've done four damage to him. So he's actually done more than I have. And he will grape shot both my dudes off. Good thing about that though is it does take a grape shot out of the way, which can be important versus. 
Storm. I still think the best move, maybe the, the Steel Shaper is the right move here. Or just the Plated Geopede and then hold it back. Hold back an Arid Mesa. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh, let's see here. I think I'm going to run out the Geopede here. And do I fetch, fetch? No, I think I, I wait till next turn to do this with the Arid Mesa. I don't know if this is the right play. If I top deck and land, this definitely wasn't the right play. But I want to put some pressure on him. He's down to 10. This makes my... He's down to 8 now. This makes him in range for just an Arid Mesa and a Lightning Helix. Yeah, it does. So a Lightning Helix and an Arid Mesa kills him next turn. But this could be the end of us because this is this is when it's very consistent for Storm to go off. Uh, if he's got a lot of mana generation here, he can pass in flames into something and hit that Grape Shot for the win. And that, that's probably what's going down here. Yep, it does look like we're dead here. So he's cast six, one, two, three, four, five, six things here. And there's seven. Is his count, I believe. But then he can desperate ritual, desperate ritual, eight, nine, ten, ten. There's eleven. And he drew a card from that. 12, 13, 14. Yeah, we're dead. So turn four, we die to storm. Uh, I don't have a rule of law in the sideboard. That's usually something I do come prepared with if I think I'm going to face storm. And with the amount of, I have been checking the data lately on MTGO, there's a lot of people running storm. So it might be in my best interest to put rule of laws other than I do have core firewalkers, which also shut this deck down. I believe I'm running three core firewalkers. I think this is well over 16 damage here. If not, he, he dies from miscalculating. <laughs> but does he still have enough? No, that's the, is that the grape shop out of the graveyard? No, that's not. So he can just pass and flames it again. So, yep. Alrighty, there's Storm for you, all the people that aren't familiar with that deck. So of course, Cunning Spark Mage Bachelors don't come in. Uh, I didn't see Goblin Electromancer, might not be that, that version. The best thing I can put in here is the Ley Lines and the Core Firewalkers, and just hope that I grab one of them. Now, I don't know, out of the equipment here, what would be the best to... I, maybe I just keep them all in. I don't think even even Mind Center can, can shut down a, a fetch land, but I don't think it's that big of a deal in, against Storm. Marine Crusader, probably too slow. Uh, so cut, cutting here, maybe the Lightning Helix. No, I think Lightning is okay. We need to cut five cards here. Maybe just all the adventuring gears or maybe the anything that's slow, slow. So maybe the Knight of Rail Inquiries go out and the Pure Steel Paladin goes out. And two Steel Shapers. Once again, I don't know how I feel about these Steel Shapers. I think we're going to try it like this. See how it goes. I guess we could just go more of a burn package and you know kill them in response to a Grape Shot if it comes down to that. But I don't think that's how it's going to, to play out. I think the the chance for me to win this is to draw a core firewalker. So we'll play first. No core firewalker in our draw here and just a flagstones. I think I'm going to mull this. And there's a ley line. And it is in my opening hand, so I can cheat it into play. So I think I will just for the ley line. I don't know if he's if he's not the echoing truth version, which most of them are. I mean, it's it's very smart for them to at least have it in the sideboard. He might not have sighted it in, but if he doesn't have the echoing truth, the ley line of sanctity is basically game unless he has an empty of warrens as well. But we won't mold this. We'll throw this into play. 
and hope for a creature here, though. So I think I'm going to Temple Garden and throw in the Venturing Gear. And that, that's a great draw. Uh, enters the battlefield if he has more lands. It's not going to work, but I think I, I am going to run it out here. And we will grab a Sacred Foundry and go ahead and play this knight. Oops, what am I doing here? I have to wait for that trigger to resolve and pass it back to him. So next turn, I'm going to be able to get in for six, I believe, while still holding up Lightning Helix. I don't know if Lightning Helix really matters. I don't know if that, those were the right plays to take out or not. But there's the Electromancer. So sweet, we gotta we we can kill that Electromancer. which we will end up doing. So we'll equip that, throw out the Arid Mesa, okay, kill the Arid Mesa to grabbing a Plains is just fine here. Go ahead and Lightning Helix this dude and get in there for six. So he's down to a 10. Still seven cards in hand, though. He's got to find an answer for that lane line of sanctity. So I guess rest in peace would have been. I initially had rest in peace in my sideboard, but I didn't think that it really had any decks that. I mean, it is a good good sideboard against Deathrite Shaman as well, but it does hurt my Knight of the Rel Inquiry. So it's turn three. He's got to have an answer for this ley line of sanctity. Guess the best thing we can draw next turn is another fetch land. But that only swings in there for six again. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sh too sure how I'm liking these adventure ge adventuring gears now. That I'm thinking about it. They're good when you draw the fetch lands. They're not good when, of course, you don't have one. So he's got no more blue source here. Cataxian probes are... Pretty much, he can use one more until it puts him at lethal next turn. So he, I guess he could, he hasn't played a land drop this turn, though. So he's thinking, thinking, thinking what he can do here. There's his Scalding Tarn. But if he wants a blue source here, that's going to put him down to a 7. So a bolt off the top. No, a bolt off the top won't do it. Uh, I need. I still need a land, which is the... You know, the most potential damage I can do is with a land. So here he goes. Here comes the Manamorphos. So this counts up to two at the moment, I believe. A lot of times versus these storm decks, it's not... 
it's it's like you don't even play. It's either either they have the combo and they win, or they beat themselves with casting too many spells and not finding their combination. So I mean, these are. I kind of like Brian Kibler wrote an article about this back in the day of why he hates modern because of these what's called unfair decks is, is what he likes to call them because it's 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 like you don't even play against them they just play against themselves they ignore you completely and just try to get off their their turn three turn four combo to win there's a lot of those decks out there right now like scape ship splinter twin storm um to a point tron i guess tron isn't quite it's more of a ramp deck than a combo deck but yeah, some of these, and they're 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 quite easy to shut down with like one or two cards in the sideboard if you get them out. So I can understand why a lot of people don't like modern or legacy because of decks like this. Because you feel like, I mean, legacy is even worse with like Charles Belcher, where you don't sometimes you don't even get a play. They kill you on turn one before you can do anything. And I understand the oh disenchant. Yeah, he did side and disenchants four lane lines. Uh, I understand the. Uh, why people don't like to play that kind of format but it's all right well hopefully we can uh there it is the aired mesa this is the perfect draw so we will throw that into play and i can't kill him this turn so maybe i just keep it up or do i crack it i don't know if i crack it here I crack the Arid Mesa, it's an extra two damage, but does two damage? I think it does matter. I'm gonna crack it. Down to three. If I top a lightning bolt, it's game. But this puts me in a position that Grape Shot can kill both my creatures here. But now we can't get Taxian Probe and Sheevan Reef unless he pays for the Gataxian Probe. So he's not going to be able to cheat out a Gataxian Probe that way. But the Seething Song is, yeah, definitely putting me in a bad position to get stormed here. Let's see here. Oh, that's why he... So the Metamorphosis, that's the Disenchant, how the Disenchant works in here. There's a Metamorphosis he can add for a white... So now he's down to a one. So he, he can't cheat those into play anymore. It's going to cost him two for the disenchant, which is expensive for his deck. So he's going to metamorphosis here. Well, I could be dead here just by the disenchant. So I guess I guess the rest in peace is the, the card of choice against Storm. Because I think we are pretty much dead here. Especially with the Pyromancer's Ascension now. But he's got to add a white. No, okay. So he's got one more Metamorphosis to add a white. Other than... Pyromancer is going to get huge here. Now I forgot about that. But zero cards in hand means that he doesn't have his kill on board. But yeah, the Man of are going to draw a ton of cards here. But he did not add a white for the disenchant. Ugh. That helps cheat everything into play. Here's the white. So either has his grape shot or he. Wait, he didn't add another seething. Holy hell! Okay. Running a double pyromancer's ascension goblin electromancer version.
yeah, you have to think he's got the grape shot in his hand here. Because we're up to like a storm count of like 50 by now. <laughs> he's not at 25 cards in this deck. All oh, this still in his graveyard. That's the only thing that's actually exiled. He's going to add a gazillion here. So he can pass in flames again. Yeah, I guess, in fact, Rule of Law probably does better against Storm than Rest in Peace does because it, it it stops him from being able to combo off to find that Echoing Truth or Disenchant to kill that Ley Line of Sanctity. So, so that, yeah, there's the mana, there's the white mana for the Disenchant, which he will kill the Ley Line of Sanctity now. And seven cards in hand. He's been able to fill up his, his uh fill up his hand from Manamorphosis and Serum Visions with these Pyromancers extension. And he's just gonna bolt me to death here. Cause the bolts do twelve damage and then he can just yeah, he can actually just uh, flash it back. Now the bull will do nine damage, but I'm at eighteen, so now he can just he can just uh, use a pass in flames. Oh, I didn't even need it there. Yeah. Ugh. Well, that's storm, folks. If anyone has not played storm, that is a a good uh, indication of what this deck does. So that was a turn four and a was it a turn three and a turn four kill, or were they both turn fours? I can't remember here, but yeah. Uh, if you can't interact with Storm, they kill you. I uh, would like to see, of course, a core Firewalker. So I do have answers against Storm. Maybe I should put in a Rule of Law and a Rest in Peace or something that matter and have a, a fighting chance versus the Storm. Anyway, this is Kevin from RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.